NumPy stands for numerical Python. In short, or in a single line, you can say that NumPy is the fundamental package for scientific computing. If you have studied in the mathematics, the identity matrix, which have all the diagonal points as same, the ones, right? So when I write np dot identity, and I can give any number, let's say if I give four, so we'll get a four by four matrix and all diagonals are having the same value as one. So now what will happen? It will print out a value and all these values will be true and false, right? True, false. So if any element is equal to 100, it will be true. Otherwise, rest will be false. So it will be false, it will be false, it will be false. Again, like all the values will be false. So let's come back to the today's topic that is a uh, NumPy. So before that, we have covered the basics of Python programming, right? Which includes Python operators, conditional statements, loops, then Python strings. And also in the data types, we have covered list, tuples, dictionaries, sets, and then we have covered the Python functions in detail. Then it was the object oriented programming. And I, and I know that it was comprehensively covered. We have covered each and every topic of object oriented programming. Then we covered the advanced Python, which includes file handling, exception handling, decorators, namespaces. And now we'll start with a few of the important libraries, which includes NumPy, Pandas, and a few of the data visualization libraries. Let me know if you are ready for the adventure and let's get started without a further ado. So let's start with the first important and fundamental library that is NumPy. NumPy stands for numerical Python. In short, or in a single line, you can say that NumPy is the fundamental package for scientific computing. And why fundamental? Because all of the advanced packages or the libraries or the modules somehow uses the NumPy. So NumPy is the essential package for scientific computing in Python. It provides support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices because we can have 1D arrays, 2D arrays, 3D arrays. So that's why you can say it provides support for the large multidimensional arrays. Next, library components. It offers a multidimensional array object which we have seen already. And it includes derived objects such as masked arrays and matrices. The main highlight you can see that is the multidimensional array object. And from that, there are so many derived objects also such as masked arrays and matrices. And it also provides a collection of routines for fast array operations. Because we know that other Python sequences like list, dictionaries, all are slow compared to the NumPy. And let me tell you that why NumPy was introduced in the infant stage. That time initially people were using MATLAB R for the uh, machine learning operations. But the issue was that the MATLAB and R was a little bit tough to learn because in machine learning, people were coming from the so many various fields, like from the mathematics, from the science, even from the arts and commerce. So it becomes a little bit hard to learn those languages, right? But everyone knew that Python is simpler, correct? But the issue was that the Python was so slow and the NumPy solves the biggest problem of Python that is the slowness. It's somehow able to pace with the other languages in terms of speed. So that's why it was introduced. And next in the array operations, it can support a wide range of mathematical operations. It can facilitate logical operations on arrays. It also allows for efficient reshaping and resizing of arrays. It also includes functions for sorting and selecting elements than input output operations. It also offers tools for performing discrete Fourier transforms. It provides basic linear algebra operations. It includes basic statistical functions and it facilitates random number generation and simulations. So the core object is the ND array. This is the central feature of NumPy, the ND array object. It encapsulates n dimensional arrays of homogeneous data types because we know that List is a heterogeneous data type because it can contain a string, integer, float, or any other data type. But this ND array encapsulates the homogeneous data types. And because of that, it is way faster than the Python lists. Now let's compare NumPy arrays and Python sequences. Python sequences includes lists, dictionaries, sets, and many more. So let's start. The first point is fixed size. NumPy arrays have a fixed size at creation, unlike Python list, which can grow dynamically. We know that there is no limit on the list uh, number of elements. We can have as much as, as we want. So NumPy arrays have a fixed size and because of that, it is faster. Then one more point that 
Changing the size of an ND array creates a new array and deletes the original. We cannot extend the original array in order to change the size. What will happen? The original array will be deleted and a new array will be created. The next point is homogeneous data types. We can have all the data types like list, dictionary, string, integer, float, anything. But in NumPy array, all elements must be of the same data type. And because of that, all the elements are of same size. The next is efficiency in operations. NumPy arrays support advanced mathematical and other operations on large data sets. Such operations are typically more efficient and require less code than using Python's built-in sequences. Of course, because of the fixed size and the homogeneous data type, we know that we have to write the less code and it will be more efficient than the Python sequence. The last one is the wide adoption in scientific and mathematical packages. Many scientific and mathematical Python based packages use NumPy arrays. These packages often support Python sequence input but convert such input to NumPy arrays for processing. They frequently output results as NumPy arrays. So now as we are learning algo trading, we need to know the use cases of NumPy arrays in algo trading. The first use case is the data preparation and cleaning. So inside that we can transform the data like convert a row trading data into structured format for analysis. We can also use NumPy to handle the missing values. So it can fill or interpolate missing data points in price series. Don't worry, we'll learn all these codes in upcoming video. Don't worry. For now, just focus on the theory part. Okay. Next is that technical analysis. So we can use NumPy to calculate indicators. We can use NumPy to analyze the trends, right? The next use case is the portfolio management. So inside that we can use in the risk management so it can calculate the covariance matrices and perform risk analysis. And we can also use in the optimization, correct? Next use case is the statistical analysis. So inside that we can use NumPy for the simulating price paths. It can generate synthetic price data for backtesting and it can also use in the hypothesis testing. So it can perform statistical tests to validate trading strategies. Don't worry, we'll learn all the code and you will be pro in that. Don't worry. Just now focus on theory. That's it. The last use case is the performance measurement. So we can use NumPy to calculate this Sharpe ratio calculation and also the drawdown analysis. We'll be always using the NumPy, but these are some specific use cases. Okay. So now without a further ado, let's get dive into the coding part of this NumPy and see the extraordinary usefulness of the NumPy in algo trading. Let's get started and learn how to create NumPy arrays. So first thing first, you need to import the library. So you need to write import NumPy. That's it. But if you want to avoid writing NumPy again and again, you can just write as NP or you can write whatever you want. But NP is a like general convention. So everyone uses NP only, right? So import NumPy as NP. Then what you can do, you can write NP dot array and inside that you can pass a list. It's that simple. So this is a 1D array, right? But if you want to create 2D and 3D arrays, what you can do for 2D, you just need to have two lists, right? So I'll just copy it add another square bracket will give comma and again list means in 2D we have two lists. So here we can see that we have two brackets uh, opening and closing. So it will be a 2D uh, array. So when I hit shift enter 2D array will get printed out. Now similarly for 3D what I can do I can just copy and paste the same again means I'll add first I'll copy it then I'll add another bracket and inside that I'll hit a comma and I'll paste the same thing means 3D array is the combination of two 2D arrays. So it's that simple. And when I hit shift enter, we'll get a 3D array. So the next is D type. So it is interesting because if you want to create an array with the data type of your own choice, what you can do, you can simply write, uh, let's say NP dot array and let's pass a list one, two, three, four, one D array. And here after comma, you can type D type and here you can write like int 32. So you will get an array of int 32. Okay. Here you have to give NP dot int 32. You will get an array of integer 32. If you want, you can also create an array with the string data type. So how you can achieve that? You just have to write str, but this will throw an error. So you have to remove this NP dot. So 
from here this mp dot and you will get an array with the string data types right so the next is np dot a range uh, if you have understood the range function in the list and other data types then it's very easy it's exactly the same like range so how you can use that you just have to write np dot a range and then you have to get the range so the first can be the lower range so let's say 0 up to uh, 12 similarly the 0 will be included and 12 will be the excluded right so when you hit shift enter you will get an array from 0 to 11 and also you can use the step size so let's say 2 then it will give you six numbers with the step size of 2 so it is really easy same exactly same like the range function which we have already studied earlier right next is the reshape and reshape is generally used with the combination of a range so let's try it so what i'll do i'll just copy and paste the a range here and here for now i'll just remove this two and i'll type reshape and two by six why because we know that this is from zero to eleven the eleven number of items and generally it gives us a 1d array but if i want to arrange 2d array so i can use this reshare function and when i hit shift enter you will get an 2d array and similarly if you want to get a 3d array what you can do you can write 2 and 2 by 3 you just have to make sure that this is the number of items should be equal to the uh, numbers here right so what is the meaning of this we will be having two 2d arrays of 2 by 3 in the 3d array right so when i hit shift enter we will get a 3d array which is having two items the first item is the 2d array and the second item is also an 2d array now we have np dot ones and np dot zeros so what we can do we can form a matrix with all the zeros or all the ones so how we can achieve that i'll just write np dot ones and inside that i'll pass the size so 2 by 3 will get a 2d array if i want 3d array what I can do, I can write two items of 2 by 3 in 3D array, right? So when I hit shift enter, we'll get a 3D array. Similarly, if you just want a 1D array of 1s, you can just write any number, let's say 6, and you will get the 6 items with 1D array. Similarly, you can apply this for zeros. So np dot zeros. And so let's say I want to want a matrix of 4 by 3. So 4 by 3, and I have to enclose this in the parenthesis. And when I hit shift enter, I'll get a 3D array of all the zeros. Sometimes it is very useful in the NLP, which we will learn in the later videos. And the next is the np dot random. So the name itself signifies that we can get a matrix with any random numbers. So let's say np dot random. And here, let's say I go 3 by 4. So it says module object is not callable okay actually we have to write again random and we will get a 2d array of 3 by 4 3 rows and 4 columns right so next is np dot lin space lin space stands for linear space or we can say linearly space so np dot lin space so here uh, we can provide a range of let's say 1 to 10 and we want a 10 numbers of linearly spaced so when i hit shift enter we get a 1d array and all the numbers are linearly spaced. Let's say if I give here three, so it will give like on a line, it will give three points and the distance between all those points is linear, the same. So this is how you can use this linear space. And let me give you another example. I want from one to hundred, let's say 25 numbers, right? So you will get 25 numbers and all are having a same distance, right? On a line. Next we have is the NP dot identity. So if you have studied in the mathematics the identity matrix which have all the diagonal points as same the ones right so when i write np dot identity and i can give any number let's say if i give four so we'll get a four by four matrix and all diagonals are having the same value as one hope it is all clear so far because these all are very easy let's quickly revise this that we have studied the theory 
first then we have learned how to create arrays 1d 2d and 3d arrays then we have learned that how we can change the data type of any array and with the help of d type we can optimize our array because sometimes when you have a very large file like let's say 10 gb and if you are optimizing that if you are converting the integer 64 to integer 32 and then definitely the size of that file will be reduced to half because sometimes let's say if you are storing the age of any person right so age we can just store with the int32 no need to store with the float if we convert from float to integer 32 then the size will be reduced to almost half so that's how you can optimize your files your code and that's how your code becomes more efficient more faster right then we have learned the np dot arrange uh, with reshape and the ones and zeros sometimes these are used in the initialization so we have learned three ways to initialize any uh, array the ones the zeros and the random right then we have learned about the linear space then we can have the equidistance points on any uh, range then in the last we have learned the np dot identity right so far i think everything should be crystal clear and if you have any doubt please let me know in the comments now let's quickly move to the array attributes we have learned in the classes that a class contains two things one is methods and another is attributes right so we have the array attributes the end dim shape size item size and detail we have actually more attributes but for now these are the most important and and along the way if you require anything else we'll learn that right so let's say uh, we create three arrays here a1 uh, is equals to np dot array let's pass a list here one two three and similarly i'll just copy and paste this and i'll make it a2 and this can be a 2d array so i'll add another bracket i'll give comma here and it is a 2d array and let's create a 3d array similarly so i'll make it a3 and i'll copy this 2d array because we know that a 3d array is the combination of 2d array so i'll give another bracket and with the help of a comma i'll paste a 2d array right we can check with a1 yeah it's 1d array a2 2d and a3 is 3d right now let's check the endim so endim is the end dimensions it tells us the dimensions of any array so when we check the dimension of a1 it gives us 1 because it is 1d array of course and when we check of a2 it is 2d and for a3 it is 3d now we have the shape so it tells us the shape of any array so let's check for the a1 so for a1 it is 3 because we know that it is a 1d array and it has three elements right similarly for the a2 it is 2 by 3 right two rows and three columns and similarly for a3 it is like two 2d arrays of 2 by 3 right in 3d what happens it will tell us that it has two items and each have the shape of 2 by 3 two rows and three columns right the next we have is size so when we check the size of a1 it is 3 because it has three elements correct and i'm sure that you have guessed about a2 and a3 also the size so a2 have size of 6 because it has the six elements 1 2 3 1 2 3 which is 6 similarly for a3 what it will be yes you guessed it right it will be 12 and now the next is item size so it tells us the size of every item right so let's check for a1 so a1 item size we know that in a1 we have like by default we have float here right so it is 8 in a1 if I want to change this, I can change with the help of D type and let's say I make it NP INT 32 because we know that we can store these values in 32 bit also, right? So when I hit shift enter here and again, when I check this item size, it is four. So that's how you can optimize your code, right? And now when we check for A2 and A3, it will be 88 because all have default is float in the NumPy. So that's why it is eight bytes, right? next is data type we have already studied we can change the data type of any uh, array let's say i'll make it str and then we'll check the size so when i hit shift enter and now when i check the size of item size of a1 it is four right okay now the next is changing data type so let's say let's say i have this a3 
and I want to change the data type. So what I can do, I can type AS type and here I can give anything. Let's say if I change, if I change to NP dot INT 64, I can do that. You have two ways. One is to assign the data type while creating the array. Another is to change with the help of AS type. These are very simple and very easy uh, operations. You can just practice. I'll give some multiple choice questions and the task for you to practice. So please make sure that you are practicing those and it will really help you. Let's quickly start with some NumPy array operations, right? So in array operations, we have scalar operations and we have vector operations. Correct. In scalar, like we have this array of uh, open, high, low, close prices. And when we multiply this with like two, so what will happen? This array will become like this, like all the elements will be multiplied by two and it will become like 200, then 202.1 like this in scalar. And in vector, what happens? Vector means both the values are an array. So because this is also a vector, correct. And this is also a vector. So these both arrays will be multiplied and this value and this element will be multiplied by this element. And you can say that same position elements will be multiplied. So scalar means just two and vector means this whole array, right? So these are the arithmetic operations. Don't worry. We'll just take some examples also for now. Just focus on the concepts. Okay. Then we have uh, the relational operations, right? So in relational, what happens in Python, if there is any element, which is non empty, right? It can be anything one, two, three, four. It is always true. And if the element is empty, it is false, right? So if we apply a relational operation on this, what will happen? Let's say OHLC. So the variable name is OHLC data day one. So what I'll say, if I say OHLC data day one is equal to equal to 100. So now what will happen? It will print out a value and all these values will be true and false, right? True, false. So if any element is equal to 100, it will be true. Otherwise, rest will be false. So it will be false. It will be false. It will be false. Again, like all the values will be false, except this first value. So that is the relational operation in Python. Then we have some functions like minimum, maximum, sum, product, and so on. So what happens if we apply these operations on 1D array, it is straightforward, simple, right? Let's say we have an array one, two, three. And if I apply minimum on this, so let's say it is equals to one. If I write like minimum of a, what it will be, it will be one, right? Similarly, if we have a two dimensional array, let's say if we have this one. So when we apply minimum on this, what will happen? We'll get the smallest value. So which can be, let's say hundred, this one. So we'll get this output. Same goes for the maximum. And for whatever the value we provide, it will be multiplied by that, right? Next, we have a very interesting part, which is indexing and slicing, and which we have already learned previously many times. It is exactly the same, but now we have 1D, 2D and 3D areas. So it is slightly different, but not difficult. Just you have to focus and we are good to go. Okay, so let's say uh, we have these two areas. Okay, let me remove this. And first we learn indexing. So before that, what I will do for 1D, it's very simple. Let's say if I have A is equals to 1, 2 and 3, 4. And if I want any value like let's say 2, what I can do, I can just write A 1 and it will print out 2. Now we have this 2D array. We have these two 2D arrays, correct? And let's say if I want to find the this value. So what will be the index of that? For that, what you can do, you can just write like uh, I will not write this whole I'll just write OHLC, OHLC and inside that, see, first we have to write the row number. So it is 0, 1 and 2. So it will be 1. And now we have this column 0, 1, 2, 3. So it is in the first column. So if we write 1 and 1, we will get this value. Simple, right? And now you pause the video and let me know the index of this value. Let me write it. It will be, you can say OHLC. Then we know that this is the second row. So it will be two. Then the column will be zero, one, two, three. So it will be three. So this is the index of this value. Correct. 
Now when we go for the slicing of 2D arrays, what I can do, let's say if I want these two values, for that I need to use slicing. So what I can do, I can write OHLC and inside that, we know that this is the first row, means 0, 1, 2, means it is the 0th row. So I'll write 0. Now I'll give a comma here and next we have to write the columns. For column, it is 0, 1, 2, 3 and let me write it 0, 1, 2, 3 and I want these two. So for that I need to use slicing. So it will be 1, 2, 3. Correct? Because this is included and this is excluded. So it will only give 1 and 2. Correct? This is how we will get this value. Don't worry, we will just attempt all these examples in the code. But for now, it is very important to understand the concept right now so that while coding, you will have no issues. Let's say we have this OHLC price data and I want these four values, only these. For that, what we can do, I'll just write the index here. So we know that this is 0, 1 and 2. So we want these 1 and 2 column. So what I'll do, I'll write 1 and I can leave like this. So it will cover all the rows, right? Then I can give a comma and for the columns, it will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So I can start from 2 and just leave it. So 2 and just leave it. It will cover the both the columns. Correct. And this is how you can get these values. Now we have the little bit tricky part, which is 3D arrays. So 3D arrays are nothing but just the combination of 2D arrays, right? So let me first explain you something. So what is 1D array? 1D array is like this. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Correct. 2D array is the combination of 1D array. So how we can make a 2D array? I can just write like 1, 2, 3, 4. And when we have two 1D arrays, it becomes a 2D array. Hope you are getting my point. What I'm trying to say. Correct. So this is a 2D array. Similarly, what is a 3D array? It is the combination of 2D arrays. So if I write these 2D arrays twice, what I can do, I can write like 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is one item of the 3D array. And again, when I write 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it becomes the second element. And when I write like this, it becomes a 3D array. So that means we can say that 3D array has two elements, right? The first is this 2D array. Second is this 2D array, correct? And then both the 2D arrays are of the size of 2 by 4, right? This is 2 by 4, 2 rows and 4 columns. Similarly, this. And now what I'll do, I'll just create a 3D array. And how I can do that? I can just add these 2D arrays. So just for the example, what you can do, you can consider this as a 3D array. This, I'll just draw a line for your understanding. Okay, let me draw it clear so you will not retaliate. Okay, let's say this is my beautiful line and a 3D array. Correct, just consider it. And actually it is because we have two elements. I'll give a comma here. Now, how can I represent this array? So I can write like this 3D array has two 2D elements. Correct, the first is this one. Second is this one. Or if you write index wise, you can write like this is zero and this is one, right? Then both the elements have three rows and four columns. That's a basic idea. Now for the indexing of 3D arrays, how we can index these. So if I just write like, if I take this, like the whole, the name of this variable is OHLC. And if I write like OHLC, and zero, then what will happen? This whole 2D array will be printed out, correct? But if I want this value, then what I'll write? I'll write like OHLC zero, and we know that this is the zero row one and two, and this one is at the first row. Again, the column number will be zero, one, two. So it is at the second column. So this is how you can access this element. So this is how we can use the indexing. Again, let's take another example. I would like to access this element. So what I can do, we know that this is the second element of the array. So I'll write one, this one, right? One, then 
this is the third row 0 1 2 so i'll write 2 and again this is the last column so 0 1 2 3 i can write 3 and we will get this value we will see all these examples in the code don't worry about that right the last thing is the slicing why i'm showing you here because it becomes really crucial a visual picture in your mind so if you have the mental picture it becomes so easy to solve all these examples right the last thing is the slicing of 3d arrays so let me just remove all these let's say i want this value how we can get that so as we considered this a whole 3d array because this is the combination of two 2d arrays right 2d and 2d correct and the index of these is this is 0 and 1 as you want this one so what i'll do i'll write ohlc and inside that we know that this is the first element first right then we know that we need all three rows so 0 1 2 so i can just write like this as we have learned in the python previously right so it will print out all the columns all the rows then i know that in column i need only these two columns so 0 1 2 3 so i can write like from 1 to 2 so for that i need to write 1 to 3 because this is including and this is excluding so it will just print out 1 and 2 and this is how you can get this with the help of slicing this is really simple but very tricky so make sure you are learning this properly and then slicing becomes very easy concept for you now one more thing i would like to show you in this notepad that one concept stacking and splitting then we'll move to the code right so when we talk about stacking uh, let's say we have these two 2d arrays right these are two 2d arrays and when we talk about stacking stacking means to keep one thing over the other so when i want to stack these two arrays so so for the horizontal what will happen i can just stack like this so it is the horizontal stacking similarly for the vertical stacking you can stack like this i wanted to show you a visual that's why i'm doing this much effort this is the vertical stacking so like when we do the vertical stacking what will happen earlier we had the array of 3 by 4 and this also 3 by 4 so when we do the vertical stacking what will happen we get an array of 6 by 4 and when we perform the horizontal stacking, what will happen? As these both are 3 by 4, so it will become 3 by 8 after the edge stack, which is horizontal stacking. And the same concept is for the splitting. Splitting what happens? When we have a big array and we want to split that. So splitting can also happen in horizontally and vertically. Same like stacking. So that was the visual representation. And now let's move to the code examples right okay let's start the examples so we have two 2d arrays of the ohlc prices and let's try to find out the max min and sum and pro so what i'll do first we have to import so import numpy as np then what i'm going to do i can write like np dot max right and we can write the variable name so it is ohlc data day one and when i shift enter it will give me the maximum value which is 103.0 correct same goes for the minimum this is 99.5 and when we apply the sum so np dot sum which gives me the sum of all the values right and product means it will multiply all the values so it is the 1.16 e to the power 24 okay let me show you these operation also the scalar and vector so what we can do uh, we can go here and i can write ohlc data day one multiply by two so two is scalar so when i write like shift enter it multiplied all the values with two right similarly uh, if I check the relational, so for that what I can do, I can write is equal to equal to and let's say we have any value, let's say 100. So if I write 100 dot 0, so it will just give true for the one value because we know 100 is the first value 
rest all values are not 100 so it will give the false value for that correct similarly for the vector operations instead of 2 we can have another vector so let's say OHLC data day 1 multiplied by OHLC data day 2 so when you perform that it will multiply all the uh, values like from 100 to 200 then again 101.52 201.5 so it's like that it's very easy it's not difficult actually the operations now we have the mean median standard deviation and vari uh, variance so don't worry we'll learn all these concepts in the statistics part of the future videos right so it's very easy you can just write like a uh, np dot mean and ohlc and it, it will give you the mean of that similarly if you want to find the median uh, for standard deviation, you will get that also and for variance, just to R. It becomes so easy with the NumPy, otherwise we have to write the whole function to calculate the uh, standard deviation, we have to write the formula and so many things, right? But with the help of NumPy functions, it becomes so easy and we can focus on the main thing, right? And then again, trigonometric functions, actually these are not used so much, but still, just for the sake of this example, we can check that. So sign of let's say OHLC, we have to write np dot sign, and it will give all the sign values of the uh, 2D array of OHLC data day one, right? Now we have the dot product. So in dot product, what happens? Like you have two matrices, right? So one should be three by four, and the second should be four by three or anything. Means the columns of the first matrix should be equal to the rows of the second matrix. Then only it will work. If I try on something else, it will not work. Let, let me show you something. And don't worry, we'll explain this whole mathematical concept in the mathematics part. So for now, just understand this. So if I write np dot OHLC day one and OHLC day two, and when I shift enter, it will not work because OHLC day one, it is three by four and same it is also 3 by 4. So in order to work this, this should be at least 4 by 3. What I can do, I can just copy and paste another row here and I'll just give a comma and shift enter. And now when I run this dot product, it will work. Means column of the first should be equal to the rows of the second. And I'll explain you the whole process in very detail, don't worry. For now, just understand that the columns of the first matrix should be equal to the rows of the second matrix for the dot product. Okay. Next we have the logs and exponents. So it is also very easy. We can just uh, like write NP exponents and the any matrix. So OHLC, it will give all the exponents value of the matrix, right? Similarly for the round floor and seal, what you can do, uh, you can round off the values. So let's say NP dot round and uh, any matrix here so i can give this and it will round all the values means it will remove all the values after the decimal so it will just give the round of value so in floor what happens uh, let me show you floor means the below value and seal means the top value uh, as the name also signifies the same so let's say if we apply let me take this only so if i apply floor on this what will happen uh, it will give me the minimum values so for this way it will be 100 for sure this will it is 0.5 uh, let me change these values actually to get you more understanding so this can be 1 and this can be 9 and this can be 3 so okay now we can apply the floor here so let's say np dot floor and ohlc day 1 so you can see that it is giving us the lower values and if I apply here the seal it will give us the upper values. I hope you are able to understand this. Let me show you. The upper means when it is 100.1 so if I apply floor it will give the 100. If I apply C it will give the 101. Right? Floor means lower and seal means upper. That's it. Very simple. Now we have the indexing slicing which we have already understood with the help of some uh, visualization but let me show you the real examples so what i can do i can just copy and paste this again here for the better understanding right 
and let's try to understand the indexing first. So what I will do, I'll have another 1D array first. So to build the momentum, if I want the value of A5, so I can just write A5 and it will give me the whole value. If I want, let's say the first value, I can write the index number zero. That's very straightforward. If I want like just two, three, four, how can I write? I can write the slicing. So the slicing of 1D arrays. So two is at one and four is at the zero, one, two, three, four. So I can write four and it will give me two, three, four. Like that's very easy. So we have done the indexing and slicing for the 1D arrays. Now let's move to the 2D arrays. So I'll hit shift enter and I'll use this now. Okay. So now if I just write like this, it will print out the whole array. But let's say only the first row, right? So for that, what you can write, you can write like, if you write zero, means this will be, right? And we want all the columns then, right? So for that, you need to write like this. And when you hit shift enter, you, you get the first uh, row. Hope it's very clear, right? It's not difficult. And let's say if I want this last column, the whole column, for that what you can do, you can write the last column means I want all the rows. So I can write like this the column and the last column will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'll just write 3 and it will print out the last column 101, 101.8 and 102.5. Now let's make it more interesting. I want these four values 102.9. 100.5, 1, 103.0 0 and 101.0. So for that, what I can do, first we will check the rows. So zero not needed. I only need the one and two. So I will write like one and rest. It will cover the last also. So one and two, the rows. Then I need only these two columns. So I'll ignore the first zero and the last three. I just want these two. So for that, I can write one colon three, one colon three. And now when I shift enter, it will give me all these four values. Hope it's very clear, right? I'll also post some multiple choice questions and task questions. So please make sure to practice all those questions. It will really help you a lot. Okay, now let's move to the 3D arrays. And for that, we will see the indexing and slicing of the 3D arrays. Now let's first create the 3D array. So for that, what I can do, I can just write np dot a range and I can give from 0 to 24 and again I can reshape into a 3D array. So let's say 2, 3 and 4 and it should print out a 3D array. Yeah. So now we know that this is the first element of the 3D array and this is the second element of the 3D array. If I want to print out the element, what I can do, I can write, okay, let me assign it to any variable. Let's say now let me print this. So 3D array and zero. It will give the first element. If I write the fun, if I write the one, it will give me the second element, right? Now, suppose I want only these values, this five, six, nine, nine, and 10. So for that, what I can do first, I have to print this one. So I'll just print zero. So it will give me this one, the first 2D matrix. Then the rest is same like the 2D uh, matrix we have already done previously. So I want 5, 6, 9, 10. So we know that this is at the 1 and 2 rows. So I'll write like 1 and for 2, I can leave it blank. Again, I, I need these columns. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So 1 and 2. So for that, I need to write 1, column 3. And it should print out the 5, 6, 9, 10. Correct. Let's take another example. Uh, I want this time this 14, 15, 18, 19, 22, 23. Just pause the video and you let me know the answer of this. That how we can print these last six values 14, 15, 18, 19, 22 and 23. Okay. Just pause the video and meanwhile I'll solve this. So we know that this is the second element. So I have to write one then. I need all the, all the three rows. So for that, I can just leave a column 
then I just need the last two columns, right? So zero, one, and two. So I can write two colon and I can leave it blank and it will print out all the six elements. So now let's say I want two, three, 10, 11, 18, 19. This is a little bit complex, but not so complex. It can be easier also. Just depends on your thinking. Okay, let me show you. So we know that we need both the elements. So I can just write like this. It will print out both the elements. Now, second, I need the 2, 3 and 10, 11 from the first, right? So for that, so I need to write a step for the first, correct? So it will print the 2, 3, 10, 11 and 14, 15 and 23. I just need 2, 3, 10, 11 and 18, 19. So row also, I just need to print the last ones. Uh, 0, 1, from 2, I can print. So it will print 2, 3, 10, 11. For the uh, second element, it will be the 14, 15, and 23, and 23. Actually, we were doing the step. So for step, it is correct, actually. right? And if you want the second element, 18 and 19, it becomes a little bit complex. Now let's make it a little bit tricky. It's easy, but tricky. So just pause the video and think that how we can get those values. So I want to print only 2, 3, 10, 11, 14, 50, and 22, 23. Just think it's it's very easy, very simple. So now we know that we need both the elements. So for that, I just write a colon. It will print both the uh, elements. Then we know that I need the alternate rows. So for that, I'll give a step size two. So it will give me 2, 3, 10, 11, 14, 15, 22, 23, but I don't want these values. So for that, in the colon, what I can do, I can just write 0, 1, 2, 3. So after 2, I can leave it blank and it will print out the 2, 3, 10, 11, 14, 15 and 22, 23. So this is how you can do this. Just perform some questions of MCQ and task and you will be good to go. Right. Okay, now we have the iterations. So iteration also very easy, not uh, difficult. Let's say if I want to print for the like 1D array, it's very easy. Uh, A6 e equals to 1, 2, 3, which we have seen previously in all the list and everything. So if I write like 4i in A6 and if I print i, it will print all the values. But now we have the 2D array. So for 2D array, I can just replace this A6 with the 2D array and it will print the rows here right all the rows the first row second row third row but i want all the elements to get printed out so for that we have a very good function in this and that is np dot but what i want i want to print all the elements of this array so for that we have a very good function in uh, numpy that is np dot nd iter what it will do it will convert all the elements of any array into a series or or into a 1d array it will convert any array like it's it can be a 3d 4d array it will convert to a 1d array and then we can use that in the any operation so when i hit shift enter it will print all the elements right so it becomes easy sometimes and again one more thing you can use here that is ravel and that also works exactly the same np dot travel or np dot nd iter i'll show you the difference in future but for now you can you can think that ravel and nd iter converts any uh, 3d 4d array to a 1d array okay next we have the reshape we have already studied right and let me show you again let's say uh, we have np dot a range i'm printing any uh, number from 0 to 24 so it will give me a uh, 1d array but i want in different shape Let's say I want a matrix of four by six, a 2D matrix, it will give me. But if I want a 3D matrix of two elements of four by three, so I can use that reshape and I'll get a 3D matrix, a 3D array of two elements of four by three, right? So that's how we can use the reshape. Next, we have the transpose. So for transpose, uh, let me show you. Uh, first, I'll print OHLC day one. And if I use the transpose here, np dot transpose, 
you will see that let me show you again now we have three by four matrix if i use np dot transpose here np dot transpose it will convert that three by four into a four by three simple and if you don't want to use the transpose you can just use np dot capital t and it should also work as same okay actually for that you don't need this for that you can just write like transpose and if you want in a short so ohlc dot t and this will also work so it's up to you you can use this np dot transpose or you can use this dot capital t both will work fine let me print it uh, for more clarification print and i can print this also now we have the revel we have already understood that right revel works as the nd iter it will convert any 3d array to a 1d array let me show you that also and uh, let's say i have this ohlc and this is a 2d array and if i apply np dot revel it will convert that 2d array to a 1d array okay now we have stacking and splitting and i have already explained you this that stacking is we have two types of stacking horizontal and vertical similarly splitting also horizontal and vertical so let me show you the horizontal stacking so how we can achieve that np dot add stack and you can pass both the 2d arrays then and it says okay we have to change the size right so because it is 3 by 3 and this is 3 by 4 so i can just remove this one row to make it work and now it works fine this was also 3 by 4 and it becomes now 3 by 6 similarly we can use the vertical stack so it will stack like vertically so for that you just need to change from h to v and it will be stacked vertically very simple now let's do one more thing that i'll make it i'll just copy and make another variable here and let's say a7 correct and when i print a7 it is like 3 by 8 array i guess now if i want to split it horizontally i can use this h split so for that i can write np dot h split and i can give a7 and in how many parts you want to split so i just want two parts so it will give me a split value you can see here it has like split it from here one and second starts from 200 correct similarly it goes for the horizontal splitting but now as we have three here so it will not get splitted so for that we need to split this in three parts so let me show you if i try np dot vertical split and a7 and in two parts it will show me that array split doesn't result in an equal division for that i need to write here three and it will give me three 1d arrays so i think that is it for this session and if you have any doubt please let me know otherwise please perform all the multiple choice questions all the tasks and projects and let's become stronger together so until then take care bye bye have a nice day see you in the next video